headshot. <laughs> My gosh, with these new headphones, I really can pwn the opposition. Good morning, peoples. It's been a while since we've got to hang out. I've missed you guys. Uh, it's been a few weeks. I've been launching a new website, dealing with some European tax regulations, all kinds of fun things. Yeah, but uh, missed you guys. Hey, have you, have you done something new with your hair? You look great. Uh, anyway, <laughs> good to see you again. And today, uh, just for a bit of a change, we are dealing with the gamers. Uh, so we did a lot of audio file stuff, and a lot of the DJ stuff, but these, this time we're dealing with gamers. And we've been getting a lot of requests from gaming types for DT990s. Apparently these are the tips. Like when you're playing CSGO and you want to hear someone creeping up behind you so you can get some mad headshots. Apparently these are really, really good. And obviously I suppose it makes sense. A lot of the actual gaming headsets just aren't as good sound quality wise as a studio headphone. The 990 in particular are kind of designed to pick out those fine details so you can see problems with your mix. So these are probably also very good for gaming. But obviously when you're playing gaming, you need to be able to talk to your team or maybe bad mouth some foreign teenagers. Uh, and to do that, you need a microphone, which the 990s don't have. So people have been doing mod mics and stuff like that. But I'm thinking we can do better. We can uh, keep it in the family and go with the Bear Dynamic Custom Headset Gear. It's a pretty good microphone from Bear Dynamic Design to work with the Bear Dynamic Custom 1. The Custom 1, they do do a gaming version, but obviously the sound quality on the 990s is better. So what I'm hoping to do is combine the two. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a three and a half mil socket in the 990s, then we can plug in the microphone, and we've created the ultimate gaming headset for the discerning gamer who knows his headphones. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get up to the workshop and do this thing. All right, let's get these badges out of the box. So, the 990s, I've seen those before. Let's have a look in here. we have in here. Alright, so you've got an uh, audio cable there. That's the actual mic. Alright, so that end's going to plug into the 3.5mm. Then you've got volume control and a mute there. Uh, we've got a 4 pin, uh, sorry, 4 pole jack there that you could plug into mobile phones and stuff like that. Or we plug it into there. And then you get the uh, the type that you plug into a PC. So let's just remove that. So you've got the two three and a half mils there, one for mic, one for uh, audio. And you've also got an embiggenator if you want to plug these into a proper amplifier while you've still got your other cables in. So uh, that that all looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's conjoin these things. So we've got a pretty standard three and a half mil jack here. Uh, this one's in an inline housing, but we're just going to use the core of it. Like you can buy them just like this. This one's a Japanese made one. They're normally quite high quality. So uh, yeah, so that should do it. And I've chosen a black just so it matches in with the body. That's gonna go in that hole. We're gonna have to embiggen this hole slightly. So we'll use a Dremel for that. Uh, let's get these apart. All right, so I'm gonna pull this ear cup off. I don't think you necessarily need to, but I'm going to just to give myself a bit more room. This is a T6 screw in here. Just need to remove one. There we go. Sorry, don't talk while holding screws in your lips. Pop that back together just so I don't lose the screw. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be, you know, I'm not, not going to go crazy with this mod. This should be pretty easy for you to do at home. Pop off the pad. I uh, need to bust this open. Some kind of tool. So, what you want to do is fly it, slide some flat item up under there and just twist a bit and it'll pop. This is just held in with clips all around the outside. You remove the dust filter, and there we have the actual driver. That's the business end of this kind of stuff. I'm gonna warm up the soldering iron. Cool, 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 cool. Right, that's warming up. So to get this out, just give it a bit of a tap. Tap, tap up. That will release the driver. And just to make things simple, we're gonna do this in a way. Uh, this isn't probably how we would necessarily do this in the workshop. We would probably unsolder the driver, but what we're going to do is we're just going to snip the cable off. I don't know if you can see there, we're just going to snip. Actually, before I forget, uh, 
take a second if you if you would if you like this video to hit like uh, it makes me happy it gives me maybe a hundred pounds worth of happiness so you're getting a hundred pounds worth of value for just one click that's that's uh, that's fabulous that's just an absolutely cracking deal so uh yeah I'd, I'd carry on with the show that off where the main cable enters the housing obviously once you've done that there is no turning back <laughs> Discard that cable. Actually, I've got a project for that, so I'll recycle that one. Right, okay, so now we have our driver with our three wires attached. It is knotted here. I'm just hoping we can undo. Oh no, it's knotted and glued on this one. So we'll just snip it just below the knot just to save messing around. And then those wires should reach the hole nicely. This is all going well. Okay, so we have three wires. Black, white, and red. Black is ground. You'll notice it's thicker than the other two, which is quite nice. On the newer ones, some of the older cables will be different. But white for left and red for right. And on our little jack thing here, we've got... That's going to be the ground, the main one there. But I'm just going to plug a jack into it, and then we can use a multimeter to test which is left and which is right. Here we go. Oh, sorry, open that up. And if you're doing any kind of electronics work like this, I always advise buying yourself a multimeter. You know, you can get one that does the job for less than a tenner, and it just makes loads of jobs like this just that little bit easier. Um, so we, using this, we can test continuity. So I've got it set to go beep when, uh, when the wires are connected. So as you'll see, the ground is connected to ground, and then the, we just want to figure out which is left and right. So the, the tip of the jack is left, and that is connected to this one, so that one's left. Just going to bend that out a little bit so I can remember, and then the other one should be right. There we go. Cool, 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 cool. So far, so good. So now what we want to do is get that in that hole. And it's it's close, but it needs widening just a little. Okay, what am I going to go for? Uh, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm using a burr tool rather than the drill bit, and this will allow me just to kind of widen out that hole a bit more easily. If you go in with a drill bit, it might try and disappear off one direction or another when it, because um, there's already a hole in there. If you're using a burr tool, you can normally get it a bit better. So I've got a burr tool, which is, is that the right size? Um, yeah. Ideally, you want to make the hole slightly smaller than your connector initially, and then widen it. Because what we really want to do is be able to use the threads that are built into this to actually thread it in to give it additional support. Uh, when I'm taking out material, what I'm going to do is try and take it out of the lower section here and leave the upper section unchanged. So leave that flat, take material out of the lower section. If you take too much out above here, your driver won't fit in properly because it needs to rest on that. Um, See, so it won't clip back into place properly. So I'm going to take the meat out from underneath. literally just taking out a tiny weeny bit to seeing if we're how we're doing so we're pretty close there a little bit more right, so we've got that through and I reckon using the pliers we could finagle that into place so that is what I will do I'm gonna grab it with the pliers and just kind of twist that get the thread to to bite into the plastic. And if you grab it from the inside it means any scratches that you make with the pliers aren't going to be visible on the on the outside. You do a slightly neater job that way. Another thing to bear in mind when you're twisting it in is you want to end up with the contacts easy to get to so you might want to twist it a little bit more or a little bit less until you've got your contacts there. But here we go. So that socket is pretty firmly in there even without any glue or anything that has become one with the housing. Which uh, solves a lot of your problems. It's not going to get pulled out when you yank your cable out. That is firmly, uh, firmly in there. We're going to add some glue as well, just in case. But, um, but yeah, it's mainly just held in with the thread. Okay, so we've pre-marked our things. We need to take our driver, and we're going to just strip the ends of these wires and then tin them, which is where you add a little bit of solder 
to the wire before you solder it together. And that is a step which is definitely worth taking. I used to skip that when I first learned to solder. I'm like, oh, why do you need to tin these things? But, uh, but yeah, it does, does help. Solder these. So I'm just holding the tip of the soldering iron to the wire to heat it up and then just feeding in a little blob of solder, just letting it all kind of soak in to the wire. There so they're all thoroughly coated in solder. What this means is when I go to solder it to the tabs, there's already solder on here and I won't need to hold the soldering iron. You saw how long it took to get the solder to stick to these nicely. If I was to solder these in place, you might overheat the socket because it's only made of plastic. If you heat up these connections too much, you're going to start melting things and it's going to possibly make the socket last long, uh, stop working or, uh, or not last as long. So we pre-tin these. Um, and also put a little bit of solder, a little dab of solder on each of the connectors and then we should just be able to join the two together. Actually what I might do, because of the way we're, we're doing this, I might... Do you see the, the little clamps on there for holding a cable in place? I'm going to snip that off. Just because we don't need that and it might touch something internally. Okey pokey. Right, so I'm going to stick the black wire, which is the ground wire, onto that thing that had the clamp on, because that's the ground, because uh, that's the ground that we tested earlier. I'm just going to get a bit of fresh solder on the soldering iron tip, and then hopefully those two things will melt together. There we go, that's those. And then again, I, I bent the left one out slightly so that I'd remember which one it was. Uh, you could mark it with a pen, there's all, you know. It's easier if you pre-mark it. You can test it when it's in there, obviously, but it's just uh, there's less room. All right, so then they're joined. So we got those three wires joined on to there, and we haven't had to unsolder anything off the driver because that gets a bit confusing. So we just reuse the existing wires from there. I'm just going to make sure everything fits back together. Nicely, it does. That's all firmly in place, so so we're good to go. This is this is very straightforward. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a bit of glue on the inside. I'm going to apply it around the socket. That will stop it from coming unscrewed or and give it a bit more support. Uh, and now I'm also going to add a bit of glue over the contacts that we've just soldered in place, just to give those some additional support. Probably unnecessary, but can't hurt, you know, during vibrations and stuff. You don't want something that want the wire breaking off or something. Okay, so that's just gonna give those a bit of support. Just gonna let that cool for a moment. Then we can put this back together. And Robert's your mother's brother. We're away. Right. Okay, so that's there. Dust filter on retaining ring. It's got a little key at the top there that you have to line up with a little hole to get it right around and then that will clip back into place. Uh, pop that side in and then it's easier to put this hinge piece into the hole on the ear cup first and then slide the yoke in the top. So put that in place, slide that into the hole. It'll kind of go click when it's engaged and then we'll put the screw in to retain it. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so that's in there. Uh, now I need to pop the pad back on. Uh, if you haven't done this before, it's harder than I make it look. Um, but essentially you wanna hook one side over, get that in there, and then get your finger up underneath the pad and hook it on as you go around using your thumb and other fingers to stop it from coming off somewhere else. That's all on. Right, okay, so now we have our DT990s with a three and a half mil socket suitable for taking the Bear Dynamic custom gear, headset gear mic. So you plug that in there, and boom. That's the ultimate gaming headset. Nice. So anyway, uh, that's how we turned the DT990s into the ultimate gamer headphone for the uh, kind of Pro Gamer. So you're going to get all the detail and accuracy from the 990 along with 
super high quality biodynamic mic for not too much. I suspect the whole package is probably 200 quid, including labor. I don't know, I'd have to, I'd have to figure it out yet. Um, that will absolutely kick the balls off nearly every other gaming headset. Yeah, you're not gonna get like surround sound like you do with some of the five driver ones, but they they generally sound so awful with like all the phase issues and stuff like that, that it's, uh, it, you know, it doesn't really give you any competitive advantage. What you want is just like a really good quality set of um, studio headphones, I suppose, just so you can pick out those those details, the, the, the crunches behind you, the, the guy just around the corner. You want to hear all that stuff. And obviously with a high quality microphone, people can hear you insulting them in various languages. So that's, uh, that's all you need. Um, yeah, I, I did think that obviously, because these are for gamers, what we, what we should have done is added some RGB because uh, you know that makes makes all your game stuff better, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, if you'd like to see us do anything else, I think these are pretty pretty good. You know, we're just going for a best bang for your buck kind of thing there. You don't want to go too crazy with them. But if you would like to see anything slightly crazier, um, I'm thinking maybe covering it in logos or something might be quite cool. But yeah, let, let us know. Awesome.